physical will, liberty, and justice for all. Cindy can't be with us tonight, so I'm going to take over the chair position just for tonight, if that's okay with everyone. Um, the first thing on the agenda is to accept the prior meeting minutes. Um, and there's handouts here of all of these things if anybody didn't get them and also a sign-in sheet. Anybody have any questions? I'd like to mostly accept them. I mean, we have a copy of them, right? Mm -hmm. No second yet. Do you want to, does anybody want us to read through what we went over last month? It's all right here. Yeah. Right. I'll make okay. a motion to accept. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, review and finalize the meeting format. So we have to talk about how we would like the meetings to go. Um, how our agenda should be. So I'll open it up for suggestions. Uh, Cindy has, a, has sent out a letter. I must have uh, misfiled it or deleted it. Do you happen to have this, Cindy's letter? Um, I do we, not. We had, oh, you don't, don't? I have it probably in my email. Uh, can you read that? We can't get online. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't, I, can't do, I can't do searches, but I can <coughs> open my email. Okay, maybe I can open, let me see if it, it's, it wants me to go to the, um, take the router number, which we. Wait a minute, I got the copy. Okay, okay. good. That's the whole point of being over here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if, if, if I may interject it, okay. a couple of things. First of all, you should have Wi-Fi by the end of this week. Okay. In, in, in the town. Yeah. Okay, so, so that'll. Okay, that, that should. That'll make it a little easier. Uh, it, it, that's one thing. And, and uh, I don't know how much Cindy spoke with you. You know, she's not feeling well because of this Lyme disease that she has. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she doesn't know and nobody knows how long it's going to take her to, to, uh, to get on the right side of it. Uh, she was feeling so bad that she was thinking about resigning, and uh, and I and I urged her to please please not do that. Uh, uh, and she agreed that she would see how it, she's going to kind of tread water, see how how hopefully get better. Uh, and and the and the other thing I I, I have I, I think I found another uh, uh, the the. Uh, boy, <laughs> the board board member, uh, I have yet to, to, to get approval from all of the town board members, and uh, and it's it's Dave Peters, uh, and I think he'd be an excellent choice. And I and uh, let me say, however, that he has expressed some reservations about having so many meetings. He's busy. He feels that you know. Uh, weekly and bi-monthly meetings are tough on him, and w would be very tough on him, and that's his only reservation. So I ask you to consider that. Uh, uh, you know, I have to tell you that I was, and I've told other folks too, that I was impressed, uh, and I remain impressed by the makeup of this board. And uh, I guess I could. I could say it was it, it wasn't by accident, but I think it was by accident. I was just looking for objective people, and I really I, I, I really think that you are a great a group of people, smart, very intelligent, uh, focus on the mission, and I really want to keep. That's one of the things I said to Cindy. I want to <laughs> please stay on. Uh, I think that Dave would also be a complement to that board. So you know, just take those comments from somebody who's not involved, but uh, I guess I shouldn't say I'm not involved, but I am, uh, only from the uh, perspective of the, of the town board, so. Mm -hmm. 
Craig, would you want to read yes, those we, uh, points <clears throat> over and then we can discuss them? Yeah, Cindy and I discussed, uh, we had a phone conversation a while back. We discussed how to uh, how to set the, this thing up so that we have input, input from the people in the town and uh, but not too much. You know, you know what I mean? We can't be, we don't want to be overwhelmed with stuff. So we'd like to limit uh, actually discussion for the last 15 minutes of the meeting and then have your input. I think maybe tonight's a little bit of an exception because we're not all here, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, so maybe we could uh, have more input put today. But, uh, but we, uh, basically what we're looking for is uh, to try to get a groundwork for this thing. Uh, so uh, we want to do what we want to do is get from you people or anybody anybody in the township we'd like some uh, specific data with a study cited or published a commission and the date with a web address for further research or input on the committee's approach Opinion or general commentary is not permitted. Uh, the committee approach ideas would be accumulate the input, categorize, 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 categorize. <laughs> each item based on the questions we decide need to be answered, and that's supposed to. Then that's going to be determined hopefully today. How we're going to accumulate and categorize uh, each uh, each item. And then we'll log each piece of input, whether it's from the public or a source, source, source we have researched ourselves. And by identifying where it came from, when, how it was categorized, and then eventually our findings about the input. We'd like to figure out a filing system, and I think you're, Karen, this is probably your biggest job, if I could turn this part of it. We'd like a filing, uh, some way that we can file this thing. Preferably, on um, you know, uh, following system on uh, Gmail would be a good way to do it. But okay. if you could figure that out, that'd be great. Uh, you know, Zai Cloud today. There's a million different ways to do it. So, uh, long as we can, and maybe, I don't know. I we'll have to think about this. Maybe we can do something that the public has access to. We want to. We want to maintain a transparency for this whole thing as much as possible. So. Uh, uh, you know, that'd be a, probably a, a good way to do it, you know, so that they could view the information and uh, you know, move forward that way. Uh, we decided to establish a five-star rating system to determine how much weight a particular piece of input should carry. Uh, we were trying to figure out, now when this stuff comes in, when the data comes in, we got to determine a way that we can judge it, how good it is. Uh, is it written by a PhD in uh, environmental issues, for example? You know, that'd probably be a good qualification. Unless they have an agenda. You have to look at those parts of it. If they have, for example, if they have a lot of money in uh, uh, the companies that extract the gases, then you know, maybe they're not, maybe the credentials aren't as good, even though they have a PhD in environmental science. You know what I'm saying? So, we'll have to sort of make a judgment along the way how, how each portion of this thing is going to be uh, uh, viewed and how it's going to be categorized, how the input's going to fit. Now, for example, we might have a situation where, well, let's say he has a PhD in environmental science, he has a, um, that's for your benefit, Bill. <laughs> and he has, uh, uh, but he also has uh, a stock in uh, a gas company that's drilling, a drilling company, then he might only get one star. If he if he's a, has a PhD in environmental science and, uh, and he doesn't have any agenda, then he might be a two or a three star. <coughs> So that, that's sort of the idea that, that we'd like to set up. So that we can come to some sort of, it's almost like a, a mathematical thing at that, that point. Now when you get to the end of this thing, hopefully we can get all the input, 
We can put the stars in each, all the data that comes in, and, and we'll come to a conclusion. Uh, I think the biggest part is, for us, and the board members, is going to be determining how we're going to determine what data is legitimate, the best data, you know, how we can determine the best data. That's going to be the biggest part of it. Now, do we refute it with our own research, or we just take the research that's coming in and then decide from there? Do, don't do any research at all. Just make judgment calls. What's the best, what's the best data that's coming in? Just from our own point of view. Now that's it's going to be a difficult thing. That's the things we have to iron out. And uh, I'd really like all the board members here to do it, but because otherwise it's hard to. I think there is a way of determining which data is probably more reliable than, say, something that comes from a group. If it states that it comes from a group of uh, environmentalists from such and such a place. Well, what's, what's their uh, goal, the group? However, if it comes from an institute of, uh, let's say, a Texas Institute of Research and Cancer, they, they pack quite a lot. Yeah. You know, exactly. And they've done their research, and they've done it and come out with a number and a fact mm -hmm. that I would say would be very reliable. If you, if you go back and, well, you come from another group on, on another issue, and it's backed up by third group. <laughs> Groups don't really mean because they have an agenda, usually. So some of the stuff that uh, it comes to us, if it's a question, you know, these people are losing their hair and demonic and, uh, it, well, who was it? You know, you're going to have to name the places. Who, who have, how are we to say whether this person may be on chemo? You know, uh, there may be other reasons why this happened. Cows are dropping dead. Well, Jesus, that's that's a pretty big issue. The Bob Kays had a bunch of cows drop dead some time ago too. Mm -hmm. Ralph Sykes had a couple die on to him. Mm -hmm. There's you know there's other things that may have swayed it. If anything like this comes about, please give us the question or give us these facts. But find out where it happened and when it happened. Now we can go look and find out, and if you can find a name, at least that takes us somewhere. And, and to back up what you said before, as far as the input from the people, we need lots of it, and, and we got to have state, you know things like these that are that have gone sour somewhere. They've had problems with say endemic. That that one I read quite a little about. Well, where endemic? What time it is? And what drilling company was it that done it? Because everything I've read so far seems to be circulated around one drilling company that's not there anymore. Is that the case? I don't know. But that's the kind of stuff, the input that we have to have. I mean, to, to, to exclude the people is silly. You can't do it. You gotta have everybody working on this. Uh, that's my feeling. But, but, you, uh, but uh, I feel, Earl, that we have to deal with science. Well, you know, I agree. They, they can't be hearsay. There right. can't be anything like uh, the that. The questions have to be can come from anywhere. And like you said, we're categorizing. If you got 18 of the same questions, well, that's one question. You know, and and we can separate them out and say, well, here's 18 to the same same question. We got to answer this, and and so on down the line. If there was like three studies that uh, agreed to the same thing, that were either refuted or agreed to something. If the more studies, the better that they agree to the same thing, the more power it would have. Right. So, I mean, that's the way I would look at it, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are we in agreement with what Cindy kind of put together as a model to review the, I mean, to use yeah. that as a... Yeah, well, I like the, the star idea. I mean, it's a, it's a, I think okay. it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. But we also have to find out how we'll, what we're going to do with the data that comes in. How are we going to make the judgment call? Are well, we I gonna think we can set it up so if we have, say, an economic issue, you know, that goes mm -hmm. in one the folder, folder. Okay. and then okay. 
I think once we have all that information, I think we need to see what kind of information we get, and then there's probably, we're going to need to look at our questions. Mm. And if we're not getting information that's relevant to our questions, then we are gonna need to do the research ourselves to best answer you know, what we want to get out of this, which is the next. Does anyone know Brad so. Walrod? Right here. Yeah. That's Brad. Okay, I that's the man. That's the, that's the man. <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a bunch of emails from you, and they, and they seem to be pretty well documented. I'm trying to get pretty, everybody links. I think most pretty, of mine have been kind of split between economics and health issues. Yes. Uh, I don't know what other categories we're going to end up with, but those seem to be what I'm finding so far. And health and economics, what about environment? I didn't, I just said what my emails so far were about. Oh, That's all okay. I'm saying. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but there has to be a lot of it. Uh, natural uh, gas glut, the big winners. Uh, that's an economic one, is a good one. Gas patch roulette, health study. Risk to property values and mortgage, that was a good one too. So maybe we can. <clears throat> maybe we can go on to the next thing, which is to determine a goal, and then um, maybe we can start going through what specific issues we should, you know, categories mm -hmm. that we're, we want to look into. Determine the goal for where we're going with uh, what in the, we in want. The end. Yes, our end goal. And then go from there with what categories, and then questions under each category that we want to determine. Oh, you mean as far as like breaking it down economically, uh, the health? Uh, right, breaking it down by categories. Okay. So then, mm -hmm. okay. you know, to the public who are sending in the data, they know what we're going to be looking at. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, a guide. Well, we we need be, guidelines. We may be adding categories as the information comes in, as the data comes in. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Linda? Hi, yeah. Um, uh, apropos of the aims and, and goals and, and methodology that you might want to suggest, there was, I think, a fabulous um, email that I got from Brad today. Right, Brad? From this guy Tom Kapner, I don't know who he is. Are you Tom? You are so smart. <laughs> no, I just ha happen to have a little experience a in the little. area. A little. You all. work for the United Nations. Uh, just uh, Any anyway, in um, he studied the socio-economic impact of extractive industries, meaning petroleum and mining. Uh, you know, which is what we're talking about right here. And what his major suggestion was, if I can just, it's three pages, but, and I have copies which I'd be happy to pass out, was that um, uh, to adopt a framework that weighs the pros and cons, that's what you're talking about, and that's the topic under discussion, right? There's, he says, the framework we employed at the United Nations was cost-benefit analysis. Do the benefits outweigh the costs or vice versa? That is, if this were your overriding question, everything would fall under it, I'm assuming. Then it becomes a question of what costs versus what <laughs> benefits. For example, ecological or health impacts versus economic gains. So there may be, econ he goes on to suggest there may be economic gains at the beginning and there may be vast problems afterwards um, and I don't know if you want copies of this no, or I, 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 there are copies I, there's a packet I put together for you oh, oh okay permission members okay, which, okay. Does which, which you it, it has a covering letter and includes various studies that I think that are important to us. if you could if you could from now on could you, could you email the stuff to us uh, yeah. I think I yeah. emailed you the covering letter. Oh, you did. Okay. The, the, the studies I referenced, I, I have, the, I'm, and was gracious enough to allow me to make some copies for you all, so they're in that so packet. But, but you have, a, but you also emailed it to us. It's I emailed happened. you the covering letter with the references. Oh, the references. Oh, because okay. it'd be okay. such a big Just file. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody could scan them in. Yeah. Okay.
just to finalize that, that was the Cornell stuff, and, and that should be available from the website. Your email has the, the home page for that Cornell site, right. and the stuff he printed out is from that website, so yes. you can get it electronically, too. No, I don't suggest you read this now. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is this for not. your information and, yeah. uh, you know, for you to consider as possible. There's a lot to wait for your yeah. Thank you. That's a lot of work. Hmm. Okay, so um, should we move on to developing a goal? Well, uh, the, the goal is uh, to find the truth about fracking. I mean, that's the that's the general goal that we have to find mm -hmm. truth about fracking. Okay, so we want to break it down into uh, sections and what goals. Do we seek to achieve? What outcome would we like to see? I think we should, uh, I think we should define truth a little better. Yeah. That's that's a big truth is a big question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, that's what we're here for—to find out the truth about it. So, we're going to find out whether uh, how uh, would like to know how fracking affects the, the community and in, in what way and. Uh, some people take it as good, some as bad, and uh, we'd like to sort out the issues relating to all that, the good and the bad about fracking. Am I covering it here somewhere? That, that's just about it in a nutshell. You know, without How will fracking impact you know, our community how are we going to explain our uh, you know in the end the last the final scenario is do we recommend it or don't we you know, how are we going to come to that conclusion or is it just some, here's what we found as far as the facts is it going to have to go to a vote from the people with, uh, in the township or uh, what are you going to do it after you after you come up with all the facts you can? So the goal of commission. We're, we're searching for facts to substantiate whether fracking is good or bad for the community. About as simple as you can make it. Linda said that cost benefit. Okay, pros, cons, kind of the same. Okay. The uh, format that Ed gave us on the uh, from Penn State is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, they've been, they they got like twenty seven of them out yes, there going already yeah, under the same format and then. Right. It appears as though those that include as much we, people. We can take that a little further. We can go uh, talk to these people about it. They'll actually send a representative here. Right. Yeah. So maybe we'll, we could do that somewhere. That's more. probably a good idea. Yeah. Will fracking have a negative or positive impact on our community? That's what we're determining. Mm -hmm. Any yes. um, Just um, so I work with language a lot. I, it's going to have both negative and positive That's impacts. Course. So you're yeah. not going to ever to be able to come up with that answer. That's, that's correct. Yes. Right. We have to. 
You're gonna. I think the. I think. Um, the. I think you. My personal opinion is you're on the right track when you were saying your ultimate decision is going to be: is it right for this community? Because you're going to be taking in a lot of information. Um, the analogy that comes to my mind is, you know, if you're trying to decide whether to see a movie, some people like it, some people don't like it, you're going to get all this information. You're going to, the right decision would be not is it the truth of fracking or is it negative or positive, but is it right for the town of Delaware? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, if you read the, the stuff that I uh, submitted to you, um, You'll get some ideas on, on this general thing. I think that you're dealing with a very, very complex issue, and, and, and it is both positive and negative, no question about it. So I think what you guys have to decide is uh, what is the, what are the important elements in your consideration? What are, how are you going to weigh uh, when you look at facts, uh, what are you going to be considering as important and, and to what degree, whether it's, you know, economic or health or environmental? I think that's the hardest part to sort out. Yes. The, it's but just, there's just so much of it because, I mean, you look at one portion of this thing and it, and it just weighs so heavily, mm. but it can weigh just about as heavily on the other side. Right. So, I, I, I you guess know what I mean? We're agreeing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, not a, there's no easy way to do this. Yeah. I, 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 my, my suggestion is simply Leave. take some time <laughs> in the next couple of days, uh, you know, think about it a lot and read as much as you can. And then you're going to, you know, it's sort of like, uh, I, I, I think of the analogy of being in a court of law. Uh, and, and if you're the, you know, the, the judge, um, you have the law to go by because that, you know, that's how you decide cases. But in, in your situation, you don't have the law. You're going to have to decide what the law is going to be. And that's going to be very hard because everything that you're going to look at will depend on, you know, on what you decide are the, the key elements in this. And in the end, you, you may not even agree. You might have to come out with a you know, different reports. I don't know. I'm just saying that this is something for you all to think about. Well, well I, I think, I think you're weighing a little bit too heavily on this, Tom. Mm -hmm. We're here to come to some conclusion. You're right. The conclusion may be, uh, well, we're trying to get as close to the truth as we can, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it may not go one side or the other. It may be closer to, it may be closer to the middle. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we're here just to report to the board. You know what I mean? We're 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 not going to make we're not the people that make this thing a law. I mean, we don't. So that that's Ed and his crew. <laughs> you know, but we we'll try to do our best with it. You know, to help help out in, in the decision making. That's for sure. You know, Steve. Oh, first of all, I want to thank you for your willingness to, you know, serve on this commission. It, it's uh, extremely difficult. Uh, and probably a thankless kind of a, a position because it, it is, in my opinion, going to be extremely hard, if not impossible, you know, to find the truth or it, if it's good or if it's bad because it can be good for one person or one group of people and at the same time be bad for a different group of people and the same thing with right or wrong and, uh, you know, if, if if you're searching for facts, and I mean, for the last four years and, and more, uh, people much brighter than than I am have been, you know, really investigating and searching, you know, and trying to find what they think is the truth or what is right and what is wrong and what's good and, and what's bad. And I don't think anybody's got any kind of a consensus. This is my own opinion is that there is one overriding fact or truth that this commission could find out for the town of Delaware. There's like 2,700 people uh, listed in the census uh, in the town of Delaware. Uh, 
I think three or four hundred of them that were counted are the kids up at the Job Corps. So they are probably not stakeholders <laughs> in the town. I think by the census there's something like about 2,000 people over the age of 18. There's 1,500 registered voters. On top of that, there's maybe three or 400 uh, people who don't vote and can't vote for good reason because they live in New Jersey, New York City, or other places, but they have second homes here and they're an important part of the economy and the community. And I think that this commission could, if you really put your minds to it, could do a real good <coughs> job of finding out what is the will of the entire community of stakeholders and as far as I'm concerned, if, if you decided and, and did an honest and thorough search and, and told me that there are more people here that are in favor of fracking, that feel that the costs you know, uh, are, are outweighed by the ultimate benefits, then I can live with that. You know, if, if I'm in a minority here and you know, don't feel that fracking is a good idea for me, but I know that the rest of the community or the majority of the people feel that way. I can accept that fact and I can use that to make choices, whether to stay in the community and let, you know, watch fracking take place or I can decide to leave and go someplace else where there may be some other serious problems. But that is one thing that I think that you could honestly achieve. You, you could design or figure out how best to gauge the will of this entire township. And, you know, uh, this is a country where majority rules or is supposed to. It's not one vote per acre or, you know, it's one vote per person. Uh, and in my opinion, that is, you know, one clear fact that you could or truth you that you could determine. If I might interrupt you for a second here. Yeah. Uh, I think Tom, I think Tom brought up at the last meeting that, uh, you know, brought up the idea of maybe a, a vote. Well, I don't know if his vote's a, you know, a great idea at this moment, but we could do maybe a census thing just to kind of get an idea. Maybe it would help the committee in some way. You get a feeling for the town. Call up, call, just randomly call up one of the... Uh, 2,000 people or whatever in the community. Well, I think you, know, you could you do, do, do like a section of it. Right. 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 I'm trying to walk at that for one reason. Who knows what kind of information that is unreliable yet? You know, here, here's something new right today, and, and from Tom, and I haven't read it. Yeah. So I'm making up my mind on something already. And, you know, and some of these facts that we know were not so, and and like I said, the environment, there, the economical impact is not all good either. So, you know, before we go to that extreme, maybe in the end, when we get the facts and the figures and, and the, the facts straightened out that are so true, then let the people go ahead and vote on to it. Well, no, yeah. no, I wasn't even saying a vote. I'm thinking about just trying to get a general idea how people think about this in general, maybe different aspects of it, you know. Uh, you know if, I, if I may, you're... The way I envisioned your job not to be political, oh. and when you start, when you start yeah, yeah. asking, I mean, you're getting into politics, and that's not the issue here. And everybody's everybody's feeling about this issue is what brought us to this problem. I mean, man stands in front of me and says something that's not fact, and everybody claps and says that they agree with it. It, it doesn't mean that it's true. I mean, what we we what, we have to find the truth. We have to stay away from the politics of it. I mean, you guys, if that's the case, I mean, hell, we just put it to a vote. And right. I'll give you a good example. Right now, it's not. The, the anti-people have made such a good, a great job of connecting fracking with polluted water. The public has, a, there's, a, there's an actual mindset. Even though the EPA, the, the Department of Environmental Conservation, uh, uh, you know, educational institutions have said that that's not true. But in everybody's mind, 
So if you're going to take that and try to come to, well, then you're getting into politics. That's not your job. We're asking you, the, the town board is asking you to, to help us find the truth. Right. I mean, people say stuff, <laughs> and, it's, and, and, they're, and, and they're guided by the glass, by people they, they, they socialize with, they're guided by the last cup of coffee they had with someone, and, and that's, the, that's the real problem. And, and that's the, that's the, 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 most of the input is coming from your school. That's, you know what I mean? So that's because you've chosen. I, see, I disagree with the way you're doing this. I'm not saying not to have input from the public. What I'm saying is, you, if you're looking to be led around, people will lead you around, Greg. I mean, it's the way it's going to be. You're, you're, you're your own board. I would, if this were for me, I would have a table out here, and I'd have some backs to the folks. You, this is, it was not meant to be a public forum, it was meant to be a commission to find out the facts. And if you need to go to the public, that's fine. I'm not, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have any. But to rely completely on, on that, I mean, there are places you can go. You can, the Department of Environmental Conservation, you can go to them and get some answers to the, quest, to the environmental questions. You, there are places you can go and get answers to it economic questions. You can make field trips and go to speak to governments and speak to places that, that have this issue and yeah, get the, I, you know. I, I, I've done, I've done a lot of it. But what, I, what I'm saying is if you're going to rely on people's, in, the, what they feel, this, or, this, or, this uh, what's the word, well, bias, the bias that they already have without well, the facts. I don't know, is there, is there a pro factor, factor here besides you tonight in, in the audience? Is it, I'm, I'm you, well, I don't know where the heck are they, where are they? I'm not if a tracker, but I, I actually uh, agree with a lot of what Ed is saying. That it's not uh, your mandate, really, to, uh, to, uh, to take a poll of the public. But I'd just like to make a couple of other points, if I may. One is that I think that this uh, assignment is look, overwhelming. Yeah. And it's like the huge, what overwhelming. The what, is overwhelming. what you've set out to do here is huge. <laughs> it's like, and also, a lot of it's already been done. And um, to make another point, a lot of the information is tainted. Everybody agrees that it's, it's tainted. Some, some of it is tainted by according to where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Or it may be um, exaggerated. Even institutes can have an agenda depending on who they're funded by. There can be an agenda of the, you know, the uh, Institute of Gas Investing, whatever it is, it can have an agenda. And you, you have to, and so I think that one way to deal with uh, a huge onslaught of information is to make the process transparent as possible. And um, that way, one, one way that input from the public can be helpful is to point out where some of the information needs to be modified. Um, there's an opposing view on this. So uh, what's coming to my mind is that you, you'll have a study, for example, like the studies that Tom has just submitted. And um, if you could make that transparent, there may be somebody who wants to introduce other scientific information that opposes that. And that you, that's, if, that's, if your process is transparent, you'll get all that information. If it's not, you're just going to get what people give you. So it's just a, a suggestion for how to deal with the overwhelming task that you've set yourself to do. You know, I, I can listen to a, a, an engineer, Exxon engineer, tell this story, or whoever, right? some big drilling company, tell this story, engineer. And, uh, and, and, I, and I tell myself, holy cow, what am I worried about, you know? And then uh, two days later, I'm re reading something about just the opposite effect, and, uh, and all, then I'm down the other side again. So, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, it's, it's really crazy for me, this whole, this whole thing. I, it's, it's, hard to, uh, it's hard to come to a conclusion. If, if you ever look at one of these uh, online, um, uh, something online where there's comments underneath, for example, if you go to uh, a newspaper article that allows comments, um, 
a lot of people will dispute what the newspaper, the journalist has said. Right. And then some people will dispute that, and then more, and then it goes back and forth. And this is very difficult to deal with. But also, eventually, you find something that has the ring of truth to it. And I don't see any other way. Well, I tell you, I'm so rabbit hole. You know. I well, you're in it. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately. I know. And, Unfortunately, uh, you're in it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's tough. Okay, so can we go back to putting in what our goal is going to be? Are we still on finding out the truth, or <laughs> have we? Okay. There's nothing but the truth. Okay. You know, I mean, Ed's got me wondering, maybe the, maybe the format's set up, you know, maybe we're not structured properly here. Um, well, you know, can we just that's not to say that it's the only, I, I didn't mean, that was my own idea. I know, I know, but, but, I mean, but, but it made but sense I, to me. But you if know you what I mean? too I'm much public, for yeah. instance, the most of the public that are going to come are going to be anti-fracking folks, so if you're going to, if that's the only information you're going to accept, it's kind of a moot point, why, why are we doing it? So, you know, you should, you've got to go out and get your own and, and find out the truth of yourself. Again, I think a, a field trip, I, sh I actually probably field trips, it should be more than one trip, but, and, and different places, and maybe to really find out pertinent information, you may have to, you may have to. I was talking, I was talking to a friend. You might know him, Rob Guyon, school, yeah. te school teacher. And uh, he has friends over there in Pennsylvania, and this is something I never, never knew before. He said, the lighting is amazing. He said the woods literally light up at night. I mean, nobody thinks about the light, but holy cow! I mean, the light, the, the lights are. Oh, you mean when they when they're drilling? Yeah. They're on. They're on. Yeah. Well, they're on all the time. Twenty four seven. Steve, can we this just big. kind of? I want to try to bring it back, and then if that, you that want I'd to like ask to a question out. at the I'd, I'd like to take you end. know. Either in the evening, after dark, it makes you know, make sure that thing is that's true. Maybe it would be to our benefit to have somebody from Penn State come out and yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. Talk Can I about take it? I'll take that as okay. okay, okay, yeah. Can I just say one thing here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try to save the rest of the comment for the end of the meeting just so we yes. can get through some of these, these points. I'm gonna save it for the end of the meeting. Okay. I'll, I'll let you ask questions again. Um, yeah, so we would like 15 minutes at the end of the meeting for public, by the way, for sure. Just to that's what we're going to do is 15 minutes at the end. It kind of got a little off track. Okay, so Craig, you're going to look into having somebody from Penn State come up and talk to us about the best way to organize our mm -hmm. group, I guess. Yeah, yeah set it up. Structure. Okay, um, can we begin going through the categories and then as we name a category that we would like to look into as a group, we can start putting in some of the questions under those specific categories. Um, I'm just looking for some, a good share of that in, in this thing from Penn State has already been categorized, if I can find it. Uh, not not so much categorized, but it kind of gives you a guideline to go by as a you know for input versus. Uh, I wrote down some um, some different categories: um, economic, development, economic development, environmental health. issues, quality of life issues, risk versus benefit. Um, I started with economic development and job growth. Where will the potential workforce come from? Do we have a viable workforce in Sullivan County for these jobs? How will the effect of the workforce affect our small businesses? What will happen to the economy, which is fueled by small business now after, after gas drilling leaves? Um, I, I, I think it would, I think there'd probably be a you know, a subtitle to that somehow. 
Okay. The whole thing, the whole, the whole phenomenon later. What happens later? Right. Right. So that could be yeah. like a whole nother category in itself. Right. And then I put in, this isn't really under economic development, but we have the emergency systems, ambulance, law enforcement, fire in place to handle the increase, temporary increase in population. And there's special training that goes along with all of that. Special training. Yeah. So maybe we, we could start with the economic issues. I can write that down. I can, and if you guys want to add some things that maybe you would like to see addressed under that. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, you know, my thought is, you know, what are these chemicals we're so afraid of, but it don't seem as though they want to divulge what it is Well, that, begin that's with. more health. You know? I think that's a health right. issue. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we start with the economics? I can put in some of the questions I had just went through. And then if you, do you have other questions you want to add in? Uh, it's, it's going to be a boom as far as the working people and the people that own property. And, uh, it's going to be housing. Be, uh, housing. housing. It's, I mean, the place is going to be hard wild. Problem. What's going to happen to our old people? They're living on a fixed income. Now when prices go up, they still got that same fixed income to live on. Now that, to me, would be a downfall. That has to be questioned where it's already happened, where, it has, where this has already taken off and gone. There's a substantial question to say, well, what happened to your older people? Did they, did they uh, realize this economic boom? To me, that would be the only serious question on economy because it's, it's going to be a takeoff for any, any working person in the area. You're, you're going to have, you're going to benefit one way or the other, either uh, the spillover, the housing, uh, the sale of property, the taxes. Uh, is the taxes going to be enough to lower it for the older people who aren't going to have that much the tax base to worry about? I don't know. That's the question we have to ask. It, you know, somewhere that already going through it. Percentage did it lower the taxes in a township or an area? <clears throat> How does it affect resale of homes, businesses? The emergency systems, I think we could probably put that under infrastructure, uh, issues of infra municipalities. Municipalities. Yeah, emergency services, roads. We'll make that its own category? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so under economic development, I have where will potential workforce come from? Do we have adequate housing? Do we have a viable workforce here to fill jobs? How does it affect our senior citizens? How will it affect our tax rates? How does it affect resale of homes and businesses? Is there anything else? Okay. So should we go on to a new category? Mm -hmm. Do you want to look at 
is issues in the municipality? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm sorry. To hear Municipal issues. Okay, so do we have emergency systems in place? Roads is the big one on the news. It's a big issue. we need to look you have more people so you have more police force yeah well I put in mm -hmm. do we have emergency systems in place fire police and ambulance mm -hmm. and hospital probably too increased emergency room and you said about the Adequate training. Training fire department. That pretty yeah. much is a cut and dried thing. Stand back and get back until the people show up that can handle it. Mm -hmm. If it's on a well site, you know, if there's anything that goes on on a site. It's specialty training. That's right. There would be for this. There, there's yeah. going to be specialty training, but the yeah. biggest part of what I've heard so far is get back away from it. Yeah. Keep everybody else away from it, and let the people that know how to handle it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's you know. Some of it's handled with explosives that you don't know about. Yeah. However, but there there is more training that goes with it. Yes, yeah. fire department is pretty much adequate up on that. Adequate training for drilling. Adequate training for drilling emergencies or drilling. What's the you, word? you can word it that way, but the actual drilling end of it, there's not much special that we as local people are going to do on site. That's that is a specialty, okay. and they they are trained to handle it. That they're, they're gonna these things take off once in a while. They're, they're gonna, yeah. and that's gonna be a, a fire, a big fire. So, but it's not something the fire so department. Earl, that's right. Earl's saying touch. what the fire department does is just keeps the med bay, keeps the people yep. away, keeps, keeps away from the walkers yeah. away, and, and let the people handle it that are trained to do that. But anyway, so that's uh, part of the. Uh, yeah, very valid Fine. point as far as your hospitals and uh, stuff like that. I mean, they're, they're going to be busy. Emergency services. Yeah. I know some people that actually work in the medical field, and one of the issues in Pennsylvania has been drug and alcohol and mental health services. Really? There's an increased need for that, I guess, with mm -hmm. some of the issues that are going on. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you have more people, so you're, yeah. you know, you're mm -hmm. going to have... More of that I don't know. Uh, you, you just have me say crime. That's one thing I haven't heard of. You know, I haven't heard one one person say anything as far as crime. Because these seem to be, you know, now with the industry coming on, you're, you're dealing pretty much with working people. You know, I, mean, well I think that they. they uh, and the locals, they seem to th think more on, you know, I'll make it myself instead of stealing it. You know, however, you got a good point, and and it's a question to be asked somewhere that they've gone through. You know, your your police departments naturally, you got more people, you're going to have more police department. And a lot of the people are younger guys, mm -hmm. so they're going out, they're drinking. Right. Biting, driving, <laughs> everything that comes up. <laughs> you know. Young guys don't do that. No. <laughs> How quickly they forget. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so municipal issues. Do we have emergency systems in place for fire, police, ambulance, and hospital? Adequate training, drug, alcohol, and mental health services, and road use. I mean, I know the. The town, well, several of the towns have worked, you know, to come up with a, well, you had a task force, and I don't know if it's been adopted. You know, it, it, it's coming up uh, at the next town board meeting, as a matter of fact, to, to adopt. 
a road to use agree yeah, road agreement. Use program, yeah. Just put it in simple terms. Uh, how does that work? Well, well what happened was, well, just to bring up the date, uh, there were several municipalities within the, within the county, uh, excluding the county, however, because the county feels that they have enough experts, mm -hmm. enough engineers that they don't need it, uh, to set up a benchmark in other words, the road condition is this oh, yeah. now, and uh, and to how are you going to assess damage? Mm -hmm. How are you going to uh, you know? It's it's a methodology of doing that, and uh, and and assigning the cost of repairs to the parties that are doing the damage. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's not a bad program. It was designed by Delta Engineering, uh, and. Uh, it, uh, I've forgotten what we paid. It was done, it actually started long before I got involved. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a good program. It, it'll establish road use agreements for not just drilling, but, yeah, any, but and every just, heavy industry. How, how, how is the cost taken care of? Well, they decide that. So they, well, so you they have to find out what kind of condition you are. The, if, they, if they're going to come to your town, they have to get a road use agreement signed with the town. And that road use agreement will tell them that they have to pay for the repairs of the, of the road. Okay. Roads. It'll assign routes that they can use, routes they can't use. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, you know, there's a lot. Uh, it's, it's, it would be, I can't yeah. oversimplify, I mean, it's, it's, it's an oversimplification already. It's Because uh, that would take some time. I mean, you'd have to go over every square foot of the roads. I mean, it, it would take time to go, like somebody like Bill well, Westenberg, engineer, I guess. But engineers know. Places. Yeah. Based on the weight and size of trucks, mm -hmm. how much damage they do. Sure. Uh, I don't know. Do you know? I don't think Bill Eschenberg knows either. <laughs> That's the point. That's the whole point we're getting involved with this thing. So, um, yeah, it, 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 and, it, and the cost of repairing the roads would then be assigned to the people that do doing the damage. And it's not just for the drilling industry. It's all for heavy industry. It could be a, a lot of trucks. It could be a, a big, big mine, you know, or something. There's a lot of trucks. That's a lot mm -hmm. of water. Water trucks. Heavy trucks. Dirt. I mean, they're moving, yeah, building roads out into the woods. It's quite a bit. Um, Craig, just for the commission's uh, information, the road use agreement, the MMTF, the road use agreement, is on the town's website. And, and you can access it there and, you know, give them about 30 pages. There's like ancillary <laughs> documents that I'm not sure are available on the website, but, but it's, it seems pretty ironclad I mean it's pretty comprehensive yeah you know, I mean it's that's what I'm good for. I mean, but it'll explain how they figure out routes and and how they do all the stuff that you know Ed summarized there I just want to let you guys know that it was there on the town website environmental issues is that the next category okay. maybe we should look at no it is a that's there's a lot of stuff that, Probably one of the biggest issues, I think, with fracking is getting rid of the water when they bring it up. When they bring that stuff back up and they, they, they build these holding tanks sometimes and sometimes they take it and they take it somewhere and dump it in another yeah. well, they, take it, they take it over to Tawanda. <coughs> Tawanda? Not Tawanda. Uh, it's reprocessed and it's cleaned up right over in the... Pennsylvania and about 97 percent of what they put in the ground comes back out of the ground mm -hmm. and they hold it and the guys that I <coughs> talked to that actually work on trucking this stuff to the site where it gets cleaned up or it goes to another site and gets reused at the next site. Without cleaning it? Huh? Without, Without cleaning it. Oh, okay. Right. See, that, that makes sense. Yeah. That well, that, they're, they've been in this business a while. Yeah. So, and they treat it just like hazardous material that, from the, the three guys that I talked to that trucked it. They have to put down tarps under it, baskets, containers, just to make a connection. He says, and it's a dry connection when they make it, and it's a dry connection when they unhook it. He said, they don't want one drop of it anywhere. So, so then, you know, there's no environmental issue there, yeah, unless there's an that's accident. In the there, world, you know, that's that's the biggest issue from what I think. Uh, that, but, that's the thing that fails the most. From what I understand, the drilling portion of it 
not so bad. They, they're covered every which way. You know, you have mm -hmm. casing within casing and so on. You're drilling down, then you start going to 90 degrees. But when they bring the water up and they're holding it, and you get some of these rains and stuff, and sometimes it goes over and mm -hmm. runs over top, or it's the, uh, the, the material that they use to, to hold it, Pollen is not a urethane. I don't know what the heck it would be. Some kind of what is it? Plastic or something? What is it? Well, well, it's steel. Oh, it's steel? Yeah, it would have to be steel. And uh, well, it's in, in, according to the, the, the you know you know by the way the regulations aren't out yet. But according to the what they originally wrote, it's going to be required that they that, that it's held in steel tanks. Ooh. And I see that a lot of the stuff in Pennsylvania. That, I mean, if you look, you'll see these steel tanks, and they're completely enclosed because of the accidents that have occurred with open pits. Yeah, that's, that's the... Uh, you know, storm, storm water, you know, makes it That would be better. Uh, one, one of the farmers that used to be right here, just across the river, uh, actually m lives right below where they clean this stuff up. That's how I happen to know it. So yeah. You know, he just volunteered the information one day. He says, that all gets taken over to you know, his town. I'm trying, I want to say Tawanda, but I don't think it is. It's uh, Wild Loosing, it's this side of Wild Loosing. And I'd like to visit that guy. We'll have to make a list someday. A list of people who'd like to <coughs> visit. And he, he would be a guy. Then you, yeah. you know, then you're in Very the real world. You know? The farmer here all his life and just moved over there because of the big trucking industry over there. Yeah. It was uh, his cattle on <coughs> His cattle on trinket. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he, 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 he gave up farming and went to driving. And I think one way to recycle it, though. Right. But, uh, that's the only way I know. That, you know, he had volunteered it that that's where it goes to get cleaned up. These yes. guys were just telling me how how they treat it. You know, because they don't want to have any problems at all. Mm -hmm. So. Hmm. You know, but there again, like the same when, when we first started, one company, you know, all, all the poor results I've had all come from one company. Well, didn't they lock it up for it? Were they, were they not careful with this stuff? But, you know, how many different companies are there that are having problems? Or is it just seem to be circulated around one? But that's all questions you got, you know, down the line. So. I have a nephew down in Texas that's... Uh uh, runs a water truck. Oh, I don't know where I was, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll have to have a chat with him someday about it. Mm -hmm. That's another issue. Maybe we can look at where will the water come from? Yeah, that's right. And where will it go? Aren't they going to take it out of the river? Well, we don't know. I don't think. Uh, I don't think that. You can just take it any way you want it. I think there has to be, there's a permitting process, you know. Yeah. And I guess they're charged for it, too. You know, they pay for it. I, I don't think they can just go to a brook, for instance, and pump it up in a tanker. No, I don't think that's the case. They have to have permits. So. Okay. But there's a lot of it. It takes a lot of water. It's, yeah. Above. But if they can reuse it, if they can reuse it, I, you know, that's, that helps a bit, you know, in a way. No, you know no what I mean. Question about it. In fact, you know, it's, I would dare say what they were talking about when they explained it to me. Probably seventy-five percent of it was going to the next well site. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe after it gets used so much, it has to go get cleaned up and reused again. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was that's a big big item. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> you know, I mean, we have one of the most, most beautiful rivers. Yeah. Around, you know, you'd hate to see that. Well, Pennsylvania's yeah. already been through this, and they, yeah. they've done their test above and below their well sites and everything else. Mm -hmm. and so far, what I've read, you know, they can't come up with any contamination. Mm -hmm. So, however, that's not to say that you know that that's not a biased report either. But, uh, it did appear; it sounded like it was a pretty pretty reliable source when I read it. Yeah. But, uh, well, I think we should look at groundwater contamination, exactly. too. Right. You know, and at the same time, when you come talk about groundwater contamination, <coughs> how deep was it before 
you know, was a shale on top of the ground when they started drilling. You know, if it was only 400 feet deep and the well's at 200 feet, you know, you got a pretty thin line there. But if the shale is at 3,000 feet and you're drilling water at 130, there's a big difference there. You know what I mean? Did they have problems with this, you know, gas in the water before they ever drilled to begin with in, in 91, 92? Yeah. I, I've heard that, Ed. I've heard stories about. Uh, right. I mean, that's the kind of stuff you got to sort out. Talk to the old well drillers. We got to talk to some old well drillers from Pennsylvania. Right. That'd be another thing to do. You know, bring it right here. Right. Bring a couple of them guys here. You know, I've been drilling for thirty years. Wells. You know. Mm -hmm. You mean water wells? Yeah, water wells. And you see, because I've heard stories about some of these wells had methane in them already. Right. You know, so I mean, that'd be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give you a good idea. Along the river, for as a good example, I mean, almost everybody has sulfur. Yeah. I kind of, and sulfur is a form of methane. You know, it's a, it's a gas. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, it, there's uh, a lot of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Go bring, bring one of those guys. And you, you know any over there? I don't know who's over there. Fitz Brothers. They're, they're right there, local, just across yeah, the river, yeah. yeah. I don't know if what's the name's still alive up in Hancock or not. You can tell. Okay, so environmental issues. Can the companies get rid of the wastewater effectively? Will the holding tanks serve their purpose? Where will the water, will water come from? And groundwater contamination. Any other issues you want to look at? Yeah, I'll suggest one. Um, just in light of the Hurricane Sandy, uh, you might want to look into what effect a major storm like that would have if it were to hit here. Because in New York, a gas fire wiped out a whole neighborhood in Queens. They hadn't figured, you know, they hadn't really planned for anything like that. And um, air, air pollution also increased truck traffic and yeah. and if they're I don't know what that thing is where you see gas flames coming up they're well, I was going to that under quality of issues that's actually versus I mean air pollution is probably environmental but the the noise and the light I would say is a I was th I was thinking where they're release they're having to release the pressure or something and the gas flames come up and that's flaring. letting a lot of stuff into the air yeah. 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 Dispose of it. disposing that's disposing of the vapor itself, but that is the cleanest way to dispose of it. They do a lot of that up in uh, Alberta, and you'll see them all over the place as you come, especially at night as you're riding. You know, we were coming south out of northern Alberta, coming south. There's a lot of them. You can see them for miles, you know, and that's what that, that's what it's all about. They're burning off the excess vapor, mm -hmm. and that is the safest way to take care of it. Okay, so I put in air pollution, and how will the weather, i.e. Storms, storms, affect the well sites? Okay, quality of life. Noise and light pollution. Noise, noise from noise. trucks, drilling. I guess the light, some, like you were saying, with the yeah. some probably some some air pollution. I would think. Mm -hmm. Just well, trucks driving down the road. You're going to have yeah. some some pollution as yeah. far as mm -hmm. you got trucks. However, I will say one thing: the truck that we just got out here right now in the fire department. It's two years old already. You can wipe your hand on the inside of the exhaust pipe. Yeah. You white gloves on, you won't have anything on your hand. Yeah. That's what the new the the, newer the engines environmental are. Uh, restrictions on your new yeah. trucks truck. is yeah. incredible. Yeah, that's good. Incredible. You know, it's not like you know you're right down New York and see a haze over. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know how many of those. I don't know how many trucks that are. Pennsylvania are two years old. You know, it's well, <laughs> you know, I don't know why they don't use uh, natural gas to 
for those trucks. You know, well, a lot of the industry is switching over. This is a pretty new industry, really. Yeah, it is. Here. I mean, this is this is something that's going to help in the end, right, environmentally, well, on that score. Right. You know, right. So it, it it's going to replace coal burners. You know, I mean, it, there's a lot of pluses to it, as, as well as being well. You got the trucks for for. Uh, a, a temper while they're drilling. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is going to be an environment. I thought this gas was all going to be shipped abroad. Pardon? I thought this no. gas was all going to be shipped abroad. We yeah. don't know that. No. That's, a, that's, a, really a that's a market condition. We're having an awful trouble getting some of our stuff that, down. And that's a market price. condition. I think, you know, the pricing is. But that's what he's saying. That, that, that it's going to be available for uh, environmental. That's, that's one more item or one more question that yeah. could okay. be addressed. All right. Well, as to where it's going to go after drilling, you'd have to go to the commodities market, I guess, to find out. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a worthwhile thing to investigate, mm -hmm. that question, yeah. under economics. Okay, quality of life. Yeah, well, I know there's some... Uh, Second homeowners uh, have a big issue with it, and you know they come up from the city to have quiet and peace. And depends on where they, depending on where they put one of these wells, I guess that could uh, be an issue. That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, um, what about it, like an increase in accidents? You know, you have more traffic. You have like, more. Yeah, more, more traffic. More traffic is, you know, well, by nature there, probably going to... noise and light pollution and yeah, some air pollution, you know. I mean, you have, uh, yeah, just the busyness of it. What is, what is that? There, there would be your, your response team, your fire departments and your uh, ambulances and, you know, that's, that's going to be the biggest, you know, those calls are going to go up. That, without a doubt. You know, but, is it going to be worth it? How much did it go up? You know, there you're going to have to talk to somebody that's been through mm -hmm. it again. Mm -hmm. you know. How about you were talking about the second homeowner, not just the second homeowner, but anybody who lives here because of the peace, the quiet, the scenery. So. How will it change our current, you know, our, our rural character, something of that nature? Rural character, I like that. That's, yeah. Sound, sounds good. I mean, it's a great, great reason to go on a field trip. Yeah. You can see firsthand how it's affected. Yeah. yeah. Other issue? None I can think of right now. Okay. As soon as I go out the door, I'll think of two. Right <laughs> okay, so quality of life. I have noise pollution, light pollution, traffic, increase in accidents, and how will it change our rural character? Anything to add to that? I don't know. Anybody out there have anything? I just want to mention that you don't have to accomplish all of this in one night. You know, it's, everything's a moving target, so your goals and objectives that you want to determine two or three weeks from now, you know, uh, they will undoubtedly change somewhat. And the same thing with your, this comprehensive list of categories, too. That, uh, but this, I think, is a good start for what, you're, what you've done here. But you'll be adding to it, I think, yes. all the way through the process. Okay. I think what I'm trying to say is I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so, a task for each member. Craig, you're going to contact Penn State. Yes. Okay. I think I may uh, 
while I'm at it too, I'm going to call up a well driller out there. Maybe I can. I've just said it'd be interesting to have a guy here that drills wells, and you know, and you hear a lot of hearsay, and here's a guy that makes a living at it for 40 years, and you know, he's an old timer, and just just hear what he says. You know. I think that would probably. You know what I mean? It'd be kind of interesting. A couple guys that yeah. probably retired by now, but yeah, whatever. You know. I'll see if I can find somebody. Yeah, are you going to make these? Are you going to send me copies of your minutes? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I believe Tess is going to put the minutes on the um, yeah, I think the that website. Was our plan, yes. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to go on. I just want to ask a question about um, uh, when in your next meeting you can have it at the town hall, okay. uh, and you should have Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, I made those arrangements. And there's some security issues that we dealt with, and. Mm -hmm going to have automatic password changes and that kind of stuff, so. Craig, as far as well drillers and talking to some of the older guys, time is such that <clears throat> you and I talk to some of them older guys, they're probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every once in a while, we track of time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. we, we try to talk to some of the younger ones. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you talk to somebody, and it's a, you know, son of a son or something. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a task you would like me to do next week? Uh, let's see. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, you're gonna you're gonna do uh, the uh, the filing system. Somehow okay. design. I'll start filing what's yeah. in the email. Now, okay, yeah, get some idea where you want to do it. Uh, Gmail, whatever. You know, okay. probably Gmail because that's where we're going now, right? She's, she's yeah. So uh, that might be the best way to do it. That way, we just throw it into a file, dump it into one file, and then. We have talked about just leaving a, like a blank piece of paper for people when they come in to take and write down questions that they do have, legitimate questions, so that we have something we can file, count them up, and you know, this is question one, two, three, four, five, or get input from them. That we know that this is this is uh, yeah. their 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 concern. Okay. Uh, I think next meeting we can have something for you know for the people to fill out. Fill out. You know, you, you, everybody has questions. Bring the paper with you. We don't have to supply the paper if you're sitting at home and you got ten minutes. Write the question down or a statement that you heard this. And this is where it's from, and, and try to give us as much information onto it as you possibly can, and we can investigate it. Yeah, websites it. or whatever. Um, but I'd like to get back to what Ed was saying before, though. I, I, I kind of like the idea of uh, developing something along with this thing, uh, and that's like bringing in this uh, Penn State guy, maybe oh, looking sure. at somebody from mm -hmm. Fritz Brothers or something mm -hmm. like that, just kind of, right. you know, so we're... You know, because this is all paper, it's, it's gobs and gobs of this stuff. But somehow, when you when you have a guy that's been drilling a well, you bring the reality of the thing. You know. Chris mm -hmm. Brothers, they drilled water wells. They drilled our water well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a totally different animal, isn't it? No, no of course no, I'm not talking about it. But what I'm saying is, these people drill wells, and they said you can't. You know, we we run the methane gas all the time. When we drill, the, when we drill, and they're only going down 200 feet, 300 feet, and they're running into methane gas. So that a lot of these people that are making these complaints, uh, they're seeing dollar signs. You know what I mean? They're they're saying, well, we can make a big to do about this thing, and maybe we'll get money from the big oil companies. I'm not saying it's happened, but I'm, you know, I'm just giving you. The level of methane is astronomically higher. Right. Right. Could be nice. Yeah. So well, you no, know, you get radon in your house. It's no big deal, or you can have a lot of radon, sure. and you got to do something about it. Sure. Well, it's, well, I'm a, yeah. But it, you know, it just makes it interesting that it is a, to have somebody like that, just to you kind of get an idea, you know, what their feelings are about this. That that actually drilled in that area, say Denmore, Denmore, or whatever it is, Denmore. Dimmick. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Not how to speak at this point. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Last fifteen minutes. <laughs> I mean, uh, okay. Um, uh, you know, it's a little frustrating because I, there's so much here that you've already addressed. But let me just, please, I'm going to urge you to look at the packet that I prepared because I think there's a lot of material in there that specifically addresses many of the, the issues and questions that you you raised. Um, and I would also ask that that you get this material to the other members of the commission and ask them to look at it. Um, I just want to just quickly repeat things. I know everybody wants to go home, but the truth. <laughs> there's there's there's, a, there's truth and there's truth, and 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 they're equally. You know, the question becomes which truth is valid and why. So let me, again, look at the stuff I gave you. And the, the important thing I want to stress, you know, is, is fairness. Uh, look at, look at, at the uh, arguments on both sides. Mm -hmm. Ed mentioned several times the field trip. I've done it. I've been down there. And I can tell you that you will get completely different stories from different people. <laughs> And if you go there uh, and just speak to the officials, you'll get one view. But if you go and speak to people whose wells have been contaminated, you'll get a very different picture. And in terms of the rural character, the thing that struck me the most is how that was destroyed. I was shocked. I, I mean, I've, I've been here since 1978, and one of the reasons I love this area is because it is a rural area. And the culture, the rural culture, is one that I feel very at home with. And I'm already seeing the division of neighbor and ne against neighbor happening here yeah. with this issue. Uh, and I saw it down there in Dimmick. It was awful. I mean, people who, who grew up together don't speak to each other anymore. And, and you know, that's so. I just want to stress: if you're going to do this, all, look at both sides. The Penn State studies. A lot of them are very, very flawed. The, the Penn State studies are almost inevitably biased in favor of the industry. If you're going to get somebody from Penn State, get the other side too. Get Cornell. Yeah. Get some people who've done work. Yeah. I, I suggest this woman, Janet Barth, who used to be the chief economist for the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. She, is, she has done work specifically critiquing the Penn State studies. You should hear from her if you're going to hear from Penn State. What I'm saying, again, in the beginning I said like a court of law. You know, you have to weigh the evidence on both sides. And, you know, even so, there is no sure way of determining what's right and what's wrong. You're going to make your, your own decisions. But I urge you, please, inform yourselves on both sides as much as you possibly can. Tom, and I want you to know too, and all of you, that we live for all the lives, you know? And uh, we, we want what's best for the community too. And I, I love the ruralness of it as well. I've lived here all my 60 some years, you know? And I just love it. And uh, I'm a jogger, I jog over, I jog through the woods, you know? And I'm an archery hunter, so I like that part of it, you know? And, and uh, I'm just a, kind of a nature boy, you know? Yeah, and uh, I don't. I'm a caveman. I'm a caveman. <laughs> I'm a mountain man. <laughs> a mountain man. But, uh, but, but I, I like that part of it. So, and I don't, uh, I don't want to uh, jeopardize. But you know, that's something you can't measure. You yeah, know, again, know. The, 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 you know, how are you going to determine what is rural? You know what? <laughs> if, you, if you think you're doing the right thing, you could be doing the wrong thing to the other guy, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I went out for a jog, like I was saying in the last meeting. I, I went ran by a farmer's house, and the farmer happened to be out in his yard, and I said, uh, you know, you probably read in the paper that I'm an anti-fracker. I said, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, I'm just reviewing this thing, you know what I mean? I tried to apologize to the guy practically, you know? And he said, you know what? This is the weird thing. He says, you know, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't want the thing in my backyard either. You know, and I go and he's a friends of uh, drillers. You know what I mean? So, uh, friends of natural gas. So, so uh, listen. You know, no matter what happens, we're we're not going to be good guys, and we're not going to be bad guys. We're going to try to. Do you have a date by which you're going to 
you have a, a date that you want to wind this up? Or no. It's open-ended? No. It's open-ended. Open-ended, great. Right? So are, are, are we meeting the next three Mondays? Am I right about Mondays. that? The next meeting would be 11-12. Um, Provided there's no hurricanes? <laughs> or nor'easters. Or nor'easters. We're, we're close, close to the end of the season. Uh, question? We left all the global warming out of there. <laughs> Decide on climate you, change. You have, That's our next duty. You have the email address for us to submit questions to you, yeah. but will there also be like a website or something like that so that all of the questions that come in, you know, that we can, that we can see what kind of questions you're you're receiving from other people um, or the comments. We really oh. talked about the best yeah. way to. You know that because we we want, you know, we want to be as transparent as possible. So that'd be one of the ways of doing it. So that that's another assignment for you too. Okay. <laughs> for example, the River Reporter, where Ann used to work, you know, they have that sure. kind of a thing that know. also Energy in Depth has that. If somebody submits a question or a comment, then like I think it was Brad you were talking about, then other people can submit comments on the comments and like so a on. Lot, so. kind of. Yeah, but it is a <laughs> forum, and uh, I. Then you get a 360 on the on the issue, yeah. which is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, 360 the, right here. Yeah. 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 There'll be a, there'll I be wouldn't have a clue how to turn the computer on. <laughs> so now that you're having your conversation. I don't have a. Well, I know what you're well, talking about. This well, is what you, you have to ask. Yeah. Earl, this is what you can do. You can sit next to Tara at the next meeting. You <laughs> can go through it and just roll it up on the screen for you, and then you'll read it. Well, I, we initially we talked about reading the emails out loud. Right. Yeah. I just don't. I in no. in interest of time, I think yeah. that's yeah. just no, not gonna. That took forever. Yeah. So um, I'll talk. I mean, hopefully Cindy's still gonna be with us because she's a really good computer person. Earl, so, Earl okay. can take one of the classes that Cindy gives at the That's right. public <laughs> computer center. Right. My library. wife already has. <laughs> Several of them. Whether or not you have like a, a comment section and, and, and you want to get into that potential can of worms, um, if you are going to have an online presence, it might be interesting to have the studies, the, you know, like the links I'm sending oh, you, and yeah, yeah, that kind of thing yeah, that yeah, could yeah. be reviewed by the public. Yeah, um, I absolutely think that would be good. because you know, like you, somebody might post a Penn State study that's been widely refuted, and then if we know that that's part of your what you're looking at, we'll know that we should also, in fairness, you know, give you, you know, a lot of other stuff that may say not so much on the Penn State study. So like this well, you have the Penn State of one star then, huh? Yeah. Penn, <laughs> is that what this? Penn State study, what Ed had given us on the Penn State, I don't know if you read it or not, but all it does here is explain how to set your commission up. That oh, gets yeah, five stars. That last that meeting. The yeah, last that, meeting. That's, that's the only thing I referred that, to back That to one Penn gets State. five stars. Huh? Yeah. yeah. That, yeah that, that's pretty I good. I mean, that's the only thing I'm going but, by as far as uh, Penn State. That does give you an idea, though, how big oil can make a, make a difference in our lives. You know what I mean? They can kind of tweak things so it sounds better over here, you know, and... Uh, are we yeah, sort of a in a public comment part now? Mm -hmm. yes. We're in a public comment part, okay. yeah. Because um, you mentioned the stars, and, and uh, my jot, the note I jotted down was stars versus peer review, mm -hmm. um, and which doesn't really mean anything quite yet. But I mean, the, the, the thought that um, you could, you could uh, ass assign a low number of stars to a very valid study just because you heard about it from Delaware Riverkeeper isn't really fair it could be the end all answer to everything you need but if you if you just say no because it's from catskill citizens for safe energy you know that's not enough you know you need to dig a little bit deeper and where i'm going with that is is with the peer review is okay say you've got one study that is saying that there's never ever been any you know f uh, pollution from fracking ever in mankind's history and then you've got a thousand other studies. <laughs> the peer review happens when you have multiple studies that are pointing to the same facts that aren't all, you know, being financed by either an environmental group or a gas company. So the stars made me a little nervous, to be honest with you. I think internally you're going to 
be qualifying things here you know, are, are these these something are valid and believable but I would personally recommend keeping this whole stars thing. So it sounds a little elementary. Yeah, yeah, it's a little elementary. Yeah. Little, little. We'll see what we can do about that. Well, I think we're just, you know, we got time yeah. to relook at that whole system the, here. Cause the company, may I? Yeah. Yes. The companies will say what you just said. Who was just speaking, Brent? Right. Uh, there's never been any instance of uh, pollution. They don't say that, they say proven. So here you have the dilemma of the methane or the uh, whatever it is that was that, pr what is the link between uh, the pollution and the drilling? You can't prove it. It's like, how can you prove that smoking causes cancer? I mean, the, that's what the cigarette companies got away with for decades because you, if something is correlated, it doesn't mean proof. That's a big issue. It's, uh, it's, it's a huge issue. Do this with, you know, let's say there's no proven study because there's no double blind study, but there's a lot of evidence. Right. So that's a really good point. Yeah. So someone's cattle dies out in Wyoming and they're drilling in the next property over, yeah. the oil company will say, well, that lady's cows died, uh, we can't prove that they died because of the drilling uh, fumes or whatever, and mm -hmm. it goes on and on. Or you gonna believe me or your lying eyes? <laughs> I'm, I'm a situation like that, if you could come up with, or, or a fact like that, that you heard this story and it's just such and so, where did it happen and when did it happen? You know, if you were going to find out the truth on it, first person in that situation, the guy's cows died, I'd go to the closest veterinarian in that area. Yeah. Find out, you know, were you working on this case before it happened? Because you well, bet the veterinarian knows. That, and that, 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 that would be the well drill the guy, you know, uh -huh. it's kind exactly. of the same idea, you know. And I think that brings us to another very, very interesting point, which I hadn't thought about before, is there are, there are different kinds of media that, you, that one can go to in this world. You can watch Fox News all day long, or you can go to MSNBC, or you can go to CNN, and each one you'll get different news, or no news. Um, I just find that interesting, you know, where your source, like what you're saying is where your source is. Now, we're not going to be able to go to the vet in Wyoming, but... Unless, hey, that's a great idea for a trip. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to Wyoming too. <laughs> <laughs> like, like leaves. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> During hunting season. Yeah. Uh, I can make a point. Cindy, I guess Cindy, job, Ed was giving a, a packet to Cindy, so she, so these are just extra packets then. So I can have this packet. Then. Are there any more questions? Well, I just got to say, I have to really, I admire you guys for taking on this job. Mm -hmm. It's big. Mm -hmm. It's a I big think job. I'm going to have to get on my research and statistics book that I may have recycled. <laughs> <laughs> I just got rid of all those. I'm like, I don't need these anymore. It's been 15 years. I need them again. Can this town make any money from this endeavor? I'm think, sitting here thinking, this is, you're inventing the wheel of a, of a sort. I mean, how many communities are thinking about this or are interested in doing this? And if you had a packet, well, there's, or there's, there's, uh, the last one that he gave us last month, there's like 27 of them in Pennsylvania already oh. doing the exact same thing. Oh, you mean communities that are communities that have concern and legitimate concern. And they want to know yes or no. Should we do this or shouldn't we do this? And and that's what this format was brought out by. We have many studies done. Yeah. As a matter of fact, in my packet, I suggest at the end, why not contact Sullivan County Department of Planning? And I put down some very specific things, information that you could ask them to provide for you. Thank you. Oh, thank you ahead of time, because anything that takes about to have good information in it somewhere. I think this is going to end up coming down to common sense. When it's all said and done, you're going to do tons of study, and you're going to hear tons of people talking, and then you're going to have to figure out what, you know, has the ring of truth and what's common sense for our town. Mm -hmm. um, I think you need to be open 
for the possibility that with all the questions you just came up with for yourself that at the end you may not have answered every one of them you may not be able to tell definitively that you know there will be what the environmental impact is because frankly it's a judgment. we may not know for decades what the full environmental impact is but you may be surprised I want you I will hope you be open to, to being surprised to find that no matter what the environmental impact is economically it just isn't feasible for the town as an example I'm not trying to push that agenda well yeah maybe I was but because <laughs> yeah, I believed it and that's sort of what I've been finding out as I've been researching and sending you stuff is like the ad valorem tax like wow that really kind of sucks after all um, so I just think you need to be open to not being able you might not be able to answer every question you put down there but you may still be able to come to a conclusion about whether it's good or bad for the town. What's Ed Valorum? I'll tell you. Right. We don't want to open that can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next meeting will be... Next Monday the 12th, 5.30. will not be this cold in here. <laughs> no, it's at the town hall. It's going to be at the town hall, I guess, It'll next just week. Hold it. Ed said we're all set <laughs> Be their fault. <laughs> And I believe there's court afterwards, though, so... Yeah. Oh, that, that'll force you to end that time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting you. know, the one environmental thing that you guys left out was um, habitat fragmentation. I don't know whether anybody but me cares about it, but it's... Yeah, that's true. It's yeah, but it does break up. Thank you. You need any help getting stuff out of the car?